Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited to be bringing you my second installment in my Imageddon series, where I'm going through my entire makeup collection, using my palettes, and telling you whether or not they are something that I plan to keep in my collection, or are they palettes that I plan to declutter during my next eyeshadow palette declutter. I'm gonna be sharing looks that I've created with the palettes. If it's a palette that I am considering decluttering, I'm gonna swatch shades that I want to keep from that palette against other palettes in my collection. I'm gonna be trying to give you as much information as possible in this video. The series was inspired by both Kat and Haley's channel. Kat does an I'm Again on her channel, and Haley does like a worth the purchase, testing all of her eyeshadows. So I'll leave both of their channels linked in the description box down below but if you're interested in episode two of i'm a Gettin on this channel stay tuned first if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content palette themed content or just chit chatting about makeup i'd love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on and other than that let's jump into the video before we jump into it if you are curious how i got this look on my face today I did film a get ready with me using the products that I picked up during this four VIB sale, so go check it out if you want to. All right, let's jump into, I'm going in reverse alphabetical order. In episode one, we did T, V, and W. I skipped the letter U because I was still working my way through a couple of my Urban Decay palettes, but I am bringing you the letters S and U. S and U. Let's start with the letter S, actually. Um, I have my Simply Posh Coastal Palette. This is new to my collection this year. I'm actually still working my way through this palette. I haven't finished this palette, um, but I believe I have one or two looks I can share with this eyeshadow palette, and I've been really impressed with the quality of this one thus far. I will finish my testing process for this before the end of the year, uh, but I just wanted to share this, and I didn't want this to be kind of what held up this video. Um, this is something that I, I do plan to keep, and I'm very excited to try more from Simply Posh in the future. Then I have my Sydney Grace Tiny Marbles eyeshadow palette. And I am so glad that I pulled this palette out earlier this year to work on this No Pan Left Behind. I've used every single shade in this palette at least one time this year. And by, by the way, if you don't know what No Pan Left Behind means, it means I've used every single shade in, the, in this palette at least one time. So I have some looks to share with you. I think my favorite look that I created using this palette was one where I layered Scarab and Firebutt. Scarab is like my favorite blue-brown shade in my entire collection. I love that shade out of this palette. I also really like the shade... I also really like the lavender shade in this palette. This is just excellent quality. The mattes are so easy to work with. They're so blendable. They blend seamlessly with one another. And I just feel like there's such a variety within this eyeshadow palette. There's so many different ways you can take this palette. The shade Web is also a really beautiful kind of satin sheeny white based shade for the inner corner. That's something that potentially I would consider trying to pan next year as an inner corner highlight. Um, the shade Marble is this really beautiful, uh, almost like a rose gold, a rose gold sort of shade. It's so, so pretty. This palette is absolutely going nowhere. I love the outer packaging. Obviously this palette was done in collaboration with Mel Thompson, um, who I miss dearly on YouTube. So this palette is, is staying. Then I have my Sigma Corderosa eyeshadow palette. And admittedly, I have not always been the biggest fan of Sigma eyeshadows. I actually don't think Sigma has a great formula. Now, I will say this is the latest palette that I've tried from them. Like, I haven't tried many of their recent palettes and they do make a really beautiful color story but i have really found that i've struggled with their mattes in palettes in the past and i just have not been you know on the sigma bandwagon like so many others are but this palette is an exception to my feelings on that i really enjoy having this palette especially for those days mostly in the summer when i'm looking for something that leans on the peachy side or the coral side or something warm toned but just a little bit different some of the shades that i absolutely love in this palette uh bella the ball is this really beautiful sparkly champagne silvery sort of shade it's really really beautiful i also love the shade high society up here this is more of like a creamy texture and it is just absolutely stunning on the eyes i'm not always a big gold person but i've really enjoyed my time with sunshine when i used the shade earlier this year i also love the shade corderosa for like a dusty kind of mauvey 
pinky sort of shade i just feel like this palette actually does add a bit of uniqueness to my collection it's not just like your standard warm tone eyeshadow palette and i really enjoyed the looks that i created using this palette this year when i was no pan left behind this so this is another one that will be staying in my collection another palette i do plan to keep in my collection is my sugar pill fun size palette this is a mini color palette and i will admit this is not my most reached for most used palette in my collection but this holds a really really special place in my heart this is a palette that really kind of got me out of my comfort comfort zone and really made me want to start playing around with color i feel like this is something that kind of got me into odin's eye and then odin's eye got me more into other indie brands and now i absolutely love indie eyeshadow so this palette is definitely near and dear to my heart i my favorite shade in this palette is 8-bit because i love like a blue purple periwinkle sort of shade but i also think player one and rage quit are so fun i created a kind of rainbow look with this palette and obviously this is nine all matte shades and i really really love the way that that look turned out it's not something i'm going to create on you know even a monthly basis but if i ever want to reach into this palette for kind of like a brighter yet pastel sort of shade i just think this one is so unique to my collection and i love having this one it's a cute little mini nine pan palette i enjoy having this palette so much definitely not going anywhere all right then we move on to the letter u and i have urban decay and unearthly to share palettes so we can start with urban decay i have my stone vibes eyeshadow palette and i will be keeping this I will say, this is not my most reached for palette, but I have brought this traveling with me the last several times I've traveled, and this is like a bulky palette to travel with, but what I love about this palette is these shades up here, they're so sparkly, and I love to do like a matte look and then just pop tiger's eye all over the lids. Um, it's just such a beautiful, really sparkly, kind of golden champagne shade, and I just feel like it is perfect for like when you're traveling and you want something a little bit sparkly but you you want something that's no fuss it's not going to take a lot of time i literally just use my finger put it on my eyes and like i'm good to go i created a look using i mostly kind of just like went like along the rows like this although i will say i usually use tiger's eye with meditate meditate i do now have a pan in so i'm really excited to have a pan in this eyeshadow palette that makes me really happy there are two dud shades in this palette that are like completely worthless in my opinion the shade raw energy literally shows up like nothing like it's literally like it's nothing and then bloodstone which is really disappointing because this has the potential to be like a really beautiful green red sort of shade like it literally just is pretty much like nothing like it almost just looks like a almost like a satin red with a bit of like a sheen it it's worthless in my opinion but i created a look using the shade ojo and opal aura like the blue and like what looks like a silvery blue in the pan but on the eyes it actually kind of red more purple or periwinkle i love the way that that look turned out i thought it was so pretty so honestly for this palette alone i was planning to keep just because i love tiger's eye and meditate but i really enjoyed the look that i created using the shade vibes and meditate as well and then again the opal aura and ojo loved i also feel like this is just like a fun palette i really do feel like this is a fun palette urban decay should come back with a holiday palette using like those fun like that fun it's almost like a creamy by the way you also really should just use a finger with this formula like i never use a, a brush i don't really think a brush picks this this formula up but with a finger it is absolutely beautiful i feel like i'm kind of close to a pan on the shade opal aura and tiger's eye as well i'm i'm so happy to keep this palette in my collection and for like a mainstream brand i feel like this doesn't compete with my indie brand eyeshadows but it's kind of like more fun for a mainstream brand and then the other palette that i have from urban decay is my naked honey which actually i was kind of going back and forth and back and forth on whether or not i wanted to keep this palette but i am going to keep it for a couple of reasons i feel like this adds something a little bit unique to my collection and then i don't feel like i have these warm honey browns in other palettes in my collection and this is not going to be like the most earth shattering special like i'm not going to get the most special eye looks from this palette but if i want something that is kind of like a warm brown or like a honey brown look or just kind of like an everyday look that 
it looks really beautiful on the eyes and lasts all day this is a palette that i can reach for it's one of my favorites that urban decay has done and i feel like if i were to declutter this palette i would kind of be decluttering it just to declutter it it's never going to be my most used palette in my collection but i do feel like it serves a purpose in my makeup collection so i am going to be keeping the urban decay naked honey then we get into my unearthly palettes and i'm going to start out with a palette that i am ready to say goodbye to so this is the alien cosmetics not normal eyeshadow palette and by the way you guys i have used every single shade in each of these palettes unless for example this one i'll post a little graphic on the screen that shows the shades that i used in this palette as against the ones that i did not and by the time i had used those shades i had already come to the conclusion with this eyeshadow palette that this palette just is not for me i feel like i've kept this around because i feel like the packaging is so cute it's some of my favorite packaging in my entire collection and even after decluttering this, I might keep this around to just display. But in terms of the color story, I just look in this palette and I don't really know what I want to do. It's not an inspiring color story to me personally. And Unearthly has come a long way with their formula. In fact, they've re-released this, pa this palette as a remastered palette. I believe there's six additional shades. Six. I guess it's train time. Must be 11. Yep. Now I lost my now I lost my train of thought. Um, Unearthly's come a long way with their formula. I just feel like this just just it just doesn't hit for me. It just doesn't hit. I don't really care about the color story, the quality, the formula. The only thing I care about is the outer packaging. So I am ready to retire this one. Two that I'm not retiring are the Sorcerer Smoke and the Fall Magic eyeshadow palette. I love both of these so much. In fact, these are the two palettes that kind of made me fall in love with Unearthly again. I haven't purchased every single palette from Unearthly. Um, I certainly am always kind of interested in what they're doing, but I, for some reason, they're actually just one of the brands that I haven't purchased everything from, even though I would rank them up there in like probably my top five indie brands at this moment. So here is the Fall Magic palette. This is such a fun palette. I abs, I guess we weren't done. We hear you. Knock on wood, now the person above me is gonna start <laughs> vacuuming. I love this color story. These shadows in this palette are just, or the shimmer shadows, like, are so special. Like, I feel like Unearthly is one of those indie brands that truly makes such a special shimmer duochrome shade, just something so sparkly. The shade Autumn is such a beautiful, like, pink to orange oh just such a flippy shade that i love i created a look with this palette using like these tones right here and i actually had in the same day two strangers stop me while shopping at hobby lobby and shopping at target to tell me how much that they loved my eyeshadow and so i was like okay like we know we know it's a good palette then uh, but i also created a look with the greens that i absolutely loved and i just think this is so such a beautiful palette. I would keep this palette for this row of shades alone. I love this. And then for something a little bit more neutral, but with a twist, we have the Sorcerer's Smoke palette. And I think this is such an amazing, incredible, fun, neutral palette with a twist. We are getting some warm tones we're getting some greens which i love but they're like more grungy approachable greens i've created green looks with this palette that i wore to work like it's not one of those things that's like you're getting like a wham bam in your face just like green like kelly green look you're not getting that i just think it's more approachable then we have these like cool tone shadows as well there's so many different directions you can take this palette and again I just think these shimmer shades in this palette are so interesting, fun, and unique. The shade Potent for like a taupey, like a mid-toned taupe. Mm, love that. Sorceress. I love, I love like a pink shifty shade. It ranks up there. Like a pink shifty shade that has a bit of like a yellow gold shift or just like a peachy shift. It ranks up there with like my aqua green teal sort of shifty shades. I don't like something like hot pink but like the right level of like a pink shift so good in my opinion and i love the shade sorceress for that and then the shade transfix is such a beautiful green as well i absolutely love and adore this palette i wish i don't i almost said i wish i had less palettes so i could give this more love but i that would not be smart of me to say because obviously i buy a lot of palettes and i like testing and trying palettes but this is such a good one so this one will be staying 
And then the final palette I have is the Unearthly Resurgence palette. And I saved this one for the end because I'm honestly so like unsure of whether or not I want to keep this eyeshadow palette. And I think what I'm struggling with is I opened this palette and I have literally no idea what I want to do with this color story. For me, this is just a color story that doesn't necessarily work for the way that my brain works. But if I look at each shade, like shade for shade, like and just consider like each single shade as a single shade, there's so much fun to be had in this palette. I love that we have a hot pink matte. I love a bright like lime green, lime like bright like neon yellow. So obviously the shade Regeneration speaks to me. I feel like this blue shade in here is also just kind of like a fun, unique blue to my collection. We have Jewel, which is kind of like a, a mid-toned pink shimmery shade. We have Creation, which is like a blue-brown sort of shifty shade. We have Solar Sis sorry, Solar Symbol, which is like a green shifty shade. And then we also have the shade Life, which is not quite a matte white because it has a bit of like a pink shift to it. And then we also have, you know, a, a dusty purple, which we love a dusty purple. So my one other gripe with this is I've noticed with the shade of Scarab, Jewel, and Solar Symbol, I have like some hard pan. So I wanted to kind of break it up shade for shade and see if I can dupe the shades that I just talked to you about. I think my least concerning shade to dupe would be the blue up here. Although I do love blue eyeshadow. Oftentimes I like to do like a blue base or not something so bold and blue like this. So if I couldn't find like a dupe to that, I would be okay. But I'm gonna start, start, shart. I hope I'm not gonna shart. I'm gonna start with the shade Creation. All right, we're gonna have to ignore this bit of a stain, but we're gonna start with the shade Creation, which is the blue round. And I'm also noticing like a bit of hard pan in that. That's just like a little annoying. I don't feel like it necessarily like affects the performance of the shadow, but okay, as we can see, Creation, stunning. I am curious how that shade compares to the Tiny Marvels blue brown, the shade Scarab in this palette and i think scarab which is this one swatch right here is definitely more like more pigmented and more of like it has more maybe like a green base yeah more green so there is scarab there is creation honestly scarab's probably something i would reach for more frequently anyway but they definitely are different because scarab has more of a green whereas um creation has more of a blue my other thought is i know that there's some blue browns in the Bella Beauté Bar Angles of Illumination. I'm gonna grab that palette quickly. And so within this palette, there are two blue brown shades that I'm thinking of. We have Moonlight and Gleam. So I'm gonna start actually with Gleam, which is this one, because I feel like that one honestly looks closer to being a dupe. There is Gleam right there. So with Gleam, there's almost more of like a purple base like a purple pink base whereas this is almost more of like a blue with a bit of a like a light red base but also has like almost some silver running throughout it i'm then gonna swatch moonlight i love moonlight so let's see how moonlight swatch compares there is moonlight right there and then there is creation still not exactly the same now i'm feeling like <laughs> At the right light, Moonlight almost has a bit of like a greenness to it, but it's not quite as opaque as the shade from the Tiny Marvels palette. I have so many other blue browns throughout my collection, you guys. I'm like, do I keep going? I'm just like, I can't necessarily imagine I'm reaching in just for the blue brown when I have so many other similar-ish blue browns. Another palette that I'm actually like thinking pretty hard about is the Ensley Flutter, mm, maybe Moonflower maybe i'm like there's a few like bluish brownish shades from here oh moonflower not really moonflower has more of like a silver goldenness to it but honestly i'd rather reach for moonflower over creation and i feel like i wouldn't get necessarily the same effect <laughs> but all these swatch next to creation i'm like i've got something close enough so i don't feel like I need to keep the Resurgence palette for the shade Creation. Now let's move on to some of the other shades that I was 
hemming and hawing about. So I feel like the next sh shadow that like really speaks to me is the shade Regeneration, which is this bright like kind of lime green sort of shade. So there is Regeneration swatched and instantly I grabbed my Surge palette from Blend Bunny. And this one is definitely going to be even like a brighter green. There is the Blend Bunny Surge, definitely a brighter green, which honestly, if I'm reaching for something that is a bright green, I'm probably going to like fully commit. So I'd be a-okay using the Surge. Another Blend Bunny palette is the Div Divination palette. And I was kind of thinking about the shade Money right here. Money is also like almost a little bit brighter and almost just a little bit lighter, but still really, really similar. And then there's also from the Ensley Rain Flourish palette, there is Petal Pop. Ooh, Petal Pop is bright. But I feel like you could sheer Petal Pop out to be... Uh, Petal Pop almost has a little bit more yellow to it. Regardless, I'm feeling like I have enough close things to that limey shade that I don't need to keep the palette for that. I'm gonna go wash my hands. All right, next we have the shade Jewel, which I really like from this palette. Jewel is one of the shades, though, that has, like, pretty significant hard pan for me. There's Jewel swatched right there. And I feel like instantly my mind goes to, I know it's gonna be probably more bright, but I'm thinking of Blossom, sorry, Bloom and Freesia from the Flower Moon palette. So this shade or this shade. I'm gonna actually swatch Freesia first. Okay, not exactly the same. The shade out of the Resurgence palette almost has more of like a orangey peachness to it. Whereas Freesia is almost like a yellow gold to a pink. It's definitely more shifty. Um, I also wanted to swatch Bloom, which I know Bloom is going to be just more intense overall. It's one of those like sparklier, thicker shades. So there's Bloom. Bloom is so pretty. <laughs> so, so pretty. Um, the other shade that I was kind of thinking of was the shade, I think it's Cantation, Incantation from the Basic Witch palette from Bella Beauté Bar. There is Incantation. Incantation is definitely, again, more flippy. Um, Incantation and Bloom actually are super similar. Incantation definitely has like a green, like a yellow green flip to it. But again, kind of swatching these all next to each other, I almost feel like I would be reaching for one of the other shades that I swatched because it's a little bit more punchy on the eyes, which is something that I typically like something almost a little bit punchier so I feel like I, I'm not needing to keep the palette for that shade I can't remember what it's called jewel I do have the shade life here which is again kind of like a matte white but it does have like a bit of a pinkness to it this is a really beautiful shade I will admit it has this really beautiful kind of satinness to it it is yeah that is stunning that is really stunning but I have so many other like matte whites. Like I just feel like, I just feel like I don't need to keep this for like a white alone. And then the final shade, aside from Nymph, which I don't do pink looks that much. So I would never keep a palette just for like a bright pink. But I do think that shade is, you know, beautiful and definitely adds a fun pop to the palette. But I do want to see what I have that is comparable to the shade Solar System. I think Solar System, Solar System and Creation would be my two top favorite shadows in this palette so there is the shade did i say solar system solar symbol and i love solar symbol because it is just like that classic like shadow i like it has like a bit of that like reflective blue green tealiness to it i do feel like there's <laughs> quite a few shadows in my collection that i'm like i have so many blue green tealy shades but i love them so like that's why so from flower moon i'm thinking of the shade sapling right here there is sapling those are somewhat similar sapling almost has more of a sparkliness to it more of an etherealness to it and definitely more like shifty shades to it i also really wanted to swatch solar symbol next to the green out of the bronze seduction palette from pat mcgrath next to this one okay so from pat mcgrath i am so curious that is like this is the first shade that kind of came to my mind all right there's pat mcgrath above it and then there is solar symbol right below it pat mcgrath 
honestly, again, ha has almost more of like a wet glossiness to it. Okay, I think I accidentally <laughs> swatched the Pat McGrath with a bit of that Ensley Rain, so I re-swatched Pat McGrath kind of like right there. Pat McGrath and Solar Symbol are actually really quite similar, except for I feel like the Pat McGrath shade almost has a bit more of like a sparkle to it. And I honestly feel like because I have the Pat McGrath, I like, and so, so many others, I feel like I don't need to keep this palette around for, like, I feel like, I feel like someone else can get more use out of this palette. That is not to say that I don't like this palette. I think it's beautiful. I think Heather did such a nice job. And I truly feel like this palette is so true to Heather, but I feel like there's someone else who would enjoy this color story more than me. So I actually think I am going to be decluttering the Resurgence palette. Now I did test this palette for the first time this year, so I will be ranking this in my end of year palette ranking. But when I do my next palette declutter, I think I will be ready to let go of the Resurgence palette. It's so hard though, because I love the outer packaging. I really love Heather as a creator. And again, this is not to say I don't think this is a good palette. I just don't think it's the palette for me. But I also just, oh, I love the outer packaging. Regardless, I think I, think I should pass this along to someone who has maybe a smaller makeup collection and is going to get more use out of this so of the palettes that we talked about today which i believe was nine we have two that i am ready to say so long to which i believe is about what we had the last i'm again in uh episode as well i don't promise i'll always have a declutter i don't promise it but it does feel good to kind of work my th way through my palette collection swatch to see you know, am I just keeping this palette for one shadow that I can dupe in my collection? Uh, that is certainly not the collection for me. I don't do like a million like comparisons. So it doesn't really make sense for me to keep palettes around just for comparing. And I already feel like I have way too many options every day. So I'm happy that I've come to the conclusion that I can declare two of these eyeshadow palettes. But I would love to know, do you have any palettes currently in your makeup collection that are on the chopping block? Let a girl know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting me and my channel as you guys always do. I love you guys so much and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.